All right, so let's talk about this one here, capturing and examining the registry. So it all has to happen on Windows. So here's Windows. And you download and install FTK Imager, which is uh, the standard tool used for this purpose, although there are some later tools that arguably uh, have less of a footprint in the memory. But anyway, FTK Imager is fine. So I've installed it. And so this is what it looks like. This is extremely famous. And so to catch, um, uh, first let's look at the registry though. In the Hive files is worth seeing. I'm just following my steps. The registry itself is, you edit it with regedit, a Windows tool that's been around forever. And this is where you can see what the registry is. And one thing to understand about the Windows registry the purpose of it is to store all the settings for all the Windows components and installed programs that used to be in a separate configuration file for each program, the way it still is in Linux. But um, Microsoft chose to combine all configuration files into this thing called the registry. And you have to get used to traversing through this tree structure here. So if I go to H key local machine system current control set and then control and then hive list. Here you see where the registry is actually stored and it is stored in a whole bunch of files all over the place. Uh, Microsoft boot BCD then there's config SAM security software system and default. And then there's an ntuser.dat. And there's a bunch of these files all over the place. These files, something like 14 of them, are all combined to make this strange binary object called the registry. And it's extremely important for forensics because everything you do on a Windows machine is kind of uh, stored somewhere in here and learning how to recover those artifacts created by your activities in here is very useful. So anyway, uh, I used to have a bunch of specialized tools you had to use to get in here, but now Autopsy is just going to do it all for us. So we need to make a copy of the registry, and you do that with FTK Imager. You do File, Obtain Protected Files. And now it warns you and this, by the way, is real important. Please be aware that FTK Imager is obtaining the system files from the live system and not the acquired image. One of my forensics teachers works for the Washington State Teachers Union, and one of his daily activities is to analyze machines to see if a teacher has been viewing pornography on a classroom machine, which apparently happens frequently because there really are some teachers who are pedophiles. And so that's mainly, and one of his students got a case and did it. Oh no, he went to court and the opposing examiner showed evidence that this machine had been viewing all this porn. And he said, that's not in there. I did that examination. He said, I know what you did. Let me tell you what you did. You opened FTK Imager and said, obtain protected files, didn't you? And the guy said, yes. He said, yeah, that pornography was on your own examination machine. That was porn you were viewing. That was not porn the teacher was viewing. And he was right. And he said, in, but in addition to this being undignified, it's also a failure of good practice. You should not be using a machine connected to the internet that is used for other purposes to do your analysis. You should have a clean, isolated machine to do your analysis. Anyway, in this case, I do want to get the images of this machine, of the registry of this machine right here, so that's fine. So now I'm going to save it somewhere. So I click Browse and choose a place like my desktop, make a new folder, and call it Registry Image. All right, say OK. And, OK, and I'm going to get all files, not just the minimum files for password recovery, but password recovery and all registry files. Then I click OK, and here it is exporting the files. And it doesn't take very long. The registry is not really very big. 
All right, it's done. So if I look in this registry files folder, it'll appear to be empty because by default, Windows hides these files from you. You have to go to view, show uh, um, hidden items. And I think view show hidden protected files, um, which Microsoft often moves this thing around. Um, I need protected operating system files. Um, let's see. Folder options is where it used to be. Uh, I don't know where. This is Windows 11. So Microsoft has hidden them again. Let me see if my hints give me any clue how to see it. Uh, yeah, I should be able to click View Options, but Microsoft has taken away Folder Options. Um, I'm sure they've still got it. They've just hidden it somewhere. Um, hmm. Well, this is a revolting situation. Prop options, perhaps. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. It's three dots, options. Now I've finally got folder options, and in here is going to be uh, show system files. Show hidden files, folders, and drives. Uh, apply. And there ought to be something about show hide extensions. Let's not do that. Hide protected operating system files. There it is. This is what you have to do. Stop hiding protected operating system files and say yes. It doesn't want you to do that. Then you will see things Microsoft really doesn't want you to see. And I'm still not seeing anything in there. Uh, maybe I need to refresh this. Let's try going to the downloads, the desktop, the registry image. Still nothing in there. Well, what a revolting situation this is. I'll try the command line, and then I'm going to try capturing the registry again. Something is not working. Let's go to the desktop, and then go into registry image, and then dir. There's really nothing in there. Okay, I must have failed to capture the registry image somehow in FTK Imager. Let me try running it again. Um, it had administrative rights. All right, let's try it again. File, obtain protected files, password recovery, and all registry files. Destination is desktop. And on my desktop, registry image. OK. OK. That should be writing the files into that folder. All right. And if I open that folder, there they are. OK. I don't know what I did wrong last time, but I got it right this time. So there we are. You see some of these files like SAM for Security Accounts Manager, Security, Software, and System. These are the files that apply to the whole operating system. If you go in the Users folder, there's a separate folder for each user. And in there, you'll find ntuser.dat, which is the files applying to just one user. So that's what you want to see. And now we can use, F we can use Autopsy to see inside there. So I open up Autopsy, and make a case. All right, a new case. And I'll call it Registry. Just Reg will do. And Next. And Reg will do for a number and finish. It'll create the database to store the data. <coughs> yeah. 
hash? keyword search service. It's trying to connect to some keyword search service that it's not going to reach. That's why it's taking so long. Anyway, now it's done doing foolish things. I think this is, uh, as always, when I'm streaming and running a local virtual machine, it runs kind of slowly. Generate a host name. That's fine. I don't care what the host name is. Next. Now, this is logical files. These are just files copied from a system. This is not a disk image. So it's logical files. Next. And now I go to the folder. Add uh, desktop. Uh, registry image. There it is. And select. Then next. And at configure ingest. Again, all the things can be checked, and I click Next, and then Finish. Whenever this thing... No, good. There it goes. And now, here it is, analyzing it. You see percentages going by on the bottom, up to 18%. And when it's done, I can view the registry image here. be able to see some things while it's going, but it looks like not yet. I should go to Data Sources. Well, let's see. Data Sources. There it is. Logical File Set. So I can expand that. And Logical File Set 1. Registry Images here. Good. There's Users. All right. So I might be able to might find what I need here. Uh, so if I choose a user and the default user on my machine is student, then in here I will see ntuser.dat, which is the sort of thing you'll find. All right. And so I'd like to um, Go to IE user, OK. And then if I select the ntuser.dat, down here it shows me a tree structured directory as if I was in regedit. So this is what Autopsy is doing to help you. These binary files that are not easily readable as they are, it's interpreting them and showing you this portion of the registry. Um, and what we're going to do is find the user assist key here which is one of the more important ones to find. So it's root software, Microsoft, Windows current version, current version, Explorer, user assist. And Explorer here is Windows Explorer, not um, Internet Explorer. And there is user assist. And you see these folders with long random letter names that are globally unique identifiers, I think. And the point is, find one of these that has a count bigger than zero. This one has a count of zero. Just have to try them until you get lucky. There, this one has uh, a bunch of values in it. All right, 
And what these are, are programs, that have been, windows that have been opened and programs. And if you look at them, they have this ridiculous, unreadable stuff. This is actually scrambled with ROT13. It is unbelievable. This is how Microsoft regards themselves as protecting your privacy, is by scrambling with ROT13, which means you move every letter 13 spaces in the alphabet. This is ridiculously weak encryption, but that's what it is. And so uh, you'll find a flag to obtain here. Uh, Yep. All right. Anyway, that's what these things are. So if you want to know what they are, you can actually reverse them with an online ROT13 viewer. Let me just open one. They're all over the place. Online ROT13. All right. Here's one of the many online ROT13 decoders. So um, where do you put the input? Ah, uh, here's the input. Okay. So let's me try fitting this in. Okay. There's um. So this ZVP, let's put that in, Z, V, P, E, B, F, B, S, G, there. And that is Microsoft in ROT13. So this is Microsoft Internet Explorer or something launching. Uh, that is the encryption, if you want to call it that used by Microsoft here in the registry. And uh, let me see if there's anything else. That, that's all I had in this one. Um, all right, I'll stop this recording.